the Chennai Storytelling Festival 2021. And this uh, session, uh, an hour and a half, all about the Earth Stories Collection. So um, uh, please, uh, leaders of this session, please introduce yourselves and, uh, and g give us the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. And I am Donald from Scotland, and I am going to go uh, first. Uh, and we in Scotland are absolutely delighted to be part, to be a partner in the Earth Stories collection. And we'll hear more about that as we go on. But first, I just want to uh, to greet you from a wintry and snowy Scotland, <laughs> where the darkness has also crept in, and we're under a bit of feet of snow, and and it's very cold. But it's uh, yeah, it's it's quite fun in its own way. So I I want to take you immediately back fifty years uh, to when I was. Uh, a young lad working on a Scottish hill farm. And we had many thousands of sheep up there in the mountains, but on the lower slopes of the, uh, the hills, we grew hay for winter feed. Now on the boundary of this farm, there was a golf course. And uh, the, the lower fields came alongside the, the golf course. And at one point, there was this strange squiggle in the boundaries. The golf course went that way. The uh, farm went that way. And in the middle was a strange no person's land. And that was a fairy now, an ancient burial mound that was believed to be inhabited by what people then and still called the fairies. And the farm, we did not touch that mound. The golf course did not touch that mound. There it rested. Now, in my later life, I have become more interested and connected with these places in our ancient landscape. And what I have found is that those places and those people do not like to be called fairies. They are the little people, the gentle kind, the Dunya Sea, the people of peace, they are the ancestors. And I would like to take you now west in our beautiful country to the oceans and to the islands. And there, there is an island in the Firth of Clyde called Butte. And at its southern end is a beautiful small bay, all sandy. And the sea washes in. And the fields come right down to the bay, and right in the center of the bay is an old skeleton of a ship, grounded, wrecked, many generations ago, and there it rests and rots. And at one end of the bay, there is a mound, an ancient burial mound, a now. Now, in this bay, in the little row of cottages on the edge of the sea, <laughs> lived an old sea captain. He was called, he was always known just as the Cap'n. He was a far-traveled mariner. I don't know whether he'd been to Canada and to India and to Asia, to all the places we have people here tonight. He was far traveled, but that was in his past. Now he was retired. He was settled there in his little cottage. And every day he went out walking on the shore to see what the tide had washed in that day. And he walked along and one fair morning and he came to the end of the bay and there he found workmen, laborers, 
from the local farm and they were busy tearing down and levelling the old mound. What are you doing, said the captain. Oh, said the labourers, looking a little shame-faced. The farmer wants us to take down this old mound, to extend his field right to the shore. The captain looked surprised, but he said, it's, it's, oh, we know, said the men, we know. It's the wee folk. It belongs to them. No good can come of this, this mean, grasping farmer. He wants to develop every inch, every bit of land for gain. No good can come of it. Well, the captain, there's nothing to do with him. He shrugged his shoulders. Back he walked along. Now that evening, he was sitting by his fireside in the cottage there in the shore. He was smoking his pipe. He was drinking his dram, his ushkabe, the water of life. Yeah, and he was just letting the, the day mull over when suddenly there came a knock at the cottage door. Quite insistent. Well, it was dark and the, the captain went to the door, he opened it. Actually, it wasn't that dark. It was a starlit night as we often have out here in the West. So you could see down to the beach, you could see out to the sea, you could see the stars sparkling in the ski. There was nobody there, nobody at the door. But after a minute, the captain looked down. And there, there was a little wee man, bearded, tanned, long hair. He looked a bit like Green, but much smaller, much smaller. There at the door, Cap'n, Cap'n, said the wee man, we need your help. My help, said the captain. Yes, said the wee fellow. That mean skinflint of a farmer. He's leveled our home. We're homeless. All the dinya she, the people of peace, we are homeless. We need your help. We need to take to ship. We know nothing of this. Me, me, said the captain, just a minute. He said, I'm retired. I have no ship. Oh, that wouldn't matter, said the wee fella. We have a ship. We have a ship. And he's tugging at the cap and trousers. Get your jacket, get your jacket. Well, the cap and put on his jacket, his sea jacket, and down he went onto the beach. And what a sight greeted his eyes. Because that beach was all a hurry and a scurry of the wee folk rushing here to and fro, carrying pots and pans and bags and packages and, oh, all oh, a huge hurry. We must take ship, said the wee fellow. And the most amazing thing was, you remember that old skeleton of a boat I told you about? Rotting on the beach? Well... It was growing before the captain's very eyes. Up came these old timbers. It was growing back. The hull, the deck, even the masts are, were reaching up. The masts were reaching up towards the starlit sky. And the wee people, they were busy. They were tacking together lots of little cloths and making the most amazing patchwork sails you have ever seen. And slowly the ship began to move. All aboard, said the wee fella. All aboard, the captain is ready to sail. And they all tumbled and bumbled and hurried and scurried, piling into that boat as it gradually glided into the sea. The captain's ready to sail, said the wee fella. Well, out into the bay went the boat. 
and under that beautiful starlit sky and the cap'n, he put his hand to the tiller and he felt the pulse of a living ship on the sea. But, but where are we going, said the cap'n. Never mind that, said the wee fella. We're going to E. We're going to E. The ship knows where to go. We just need your hand on the tiller, Captain. Well, the boat, as if of its own accord, with all that bustle of the little folk, headed straight out of the bay. And the boat swung west out round the island, and nor nor west, out into the open sea, with a beautiful headwind behind. It rode the waves with the grace of a swan so beautiful. And then, of course, the captain remembered. E, E, the old name for Iona, Iona, the beautiful sacred island of the West. That was where they were going. And as if the boat knew its own mind, but the captain steering up they sailed north, northwest in a calm sea with a gentle breeze behind until there ahead of them was the beautiful island of Iona green and rocky, even under a night sky. And as they came on towards the island, there was a bay opening in front of them, a sandy bay on the south of the island. And on each horn of the bay was a mound, an old mound. And on and on they came, and gently the boat came into the bay. It glided forward, it beached, and oh, suddenly, what a hustle and bustle as all the wee folk tumbled and bumbled and hurried and scurried as out they scrambled from the boat carrying their packages and their bundles and all their living goods on their backs and their heads. And the foam washed into the shore. But... As they all struggled to land, suddenly the captain was amazed to see all this other horde of little people pouring along the beach and rushing down towards the shore and the foam and the wash as the waves broke and the sand to pull in their cousins, their friends, the other little folk strangers many, to pull them in to safety on the shore. And oh, there was an embracing and a hugging and there were tears and there were cheers and there was greeting and there was weeping. Oh, welcome, welcome, you're safe. Oh, they said, oh, it's terrible. Our house, our home has been destroyed by this wicked farmer, this mean old skin flint. We're homeless. Oh, come, come, said the little people of Eo, of Iona. Don't be concerned, they said. Look, look, come and stay with us. We have two homes. And sure enough, they pointed to each horn of the bay. And on each horn was an ancient mound, a mound of the Dunya she of the little folk, of the gentle kind, of the wee people. And oh, they were all welcomed in and settled. There was room and a welcome and a grace and a peace for all. And suddenly the captain realized he had to get home. He had delivered his precious cargo. Now what about him? <gasps> Don't worry, said the little fella. That ship knows its way. Keep your hand to the tiller. And here, Cap'n, here is a gift for you. And he handed the Cap'n a little box. No, no, said the Cap'n. 
I want no pay. I want no reward for what I have done this night. Ah, said the little fella. No, no. He said, this is no reward. This is no pay. This is a minding, Cap'n. A minding of the little people, the Dinya she. Well, soon the Cap'n was on that boat. It backed out. It glided out of the bay. Down it went to the open sea, south by southeast, round into the island of Butte and into the bay. And almost without thinking, the boat came aground and it began to sink, to subside, to grow back into the beach in its old ruined state. Well, before he could think or remember, the captain was back in his little cottage and he slept sound that night. And many nights after he slept sound, but he was at rest and at peace. And that little box, the minding, it was full of the gold coins, the old coins that had sunk to the bottom of the sea. It was never exhausted. He had his pipe of tobacco. He had his dram. He was a happy man. But that farmer, that bit of ground that they stole from the little folk, that yielded nothing but thorns and thistles to the end of that miserable old farmer's day. And so, my friends, may the blessing of the Dunya She and the welcome of the Dunya She to the stranger be always yours and a blessing and a good health be with you. Thank you. So that's that's a story, friends, from the from the collection, and um, uh, uh, Brian will, will get uh, Brian will give you some context now, and you'll see how that 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 story. Uh,